All right, so I'm driving with Willie Pep, and uh, I got to ask the question today about. Um, I, I get this question a lot, actually, and it, it's always a little odd to me. It's usually by one of two people, types of people: uh, people who like pit bulls, or people who just aren't dog people who don't really know much about them. So it, the question was, "What do you think of pit bulls?" And the short answer is, I I, I really don't think about them much at all until I get asked that question um, and I think that collectively we should, we should stop thinking about them uh, because the vast majority of the ideas about them are totally erroneous um, all these myths about them have just been you know, culturally transmitted and it's bizarre um, Unless you understand why that happened, I'm going to get into that in a second, and that's the longer answer. But I, I don't think about them much. You know, most of the time when people think of a pit bull or think they have a pit bull or think that they see a pit bull, it's really a mutt. A lot of dogs, if you put like different types of dogs together, they look pit bullish. Now he, well, he's a, a, he's a very specific kind of pit bull. He's what's called an American bully. It's like a hybrid breed, sort of like a designer hybrid breed uh, pit. And they're pretty cool looking. They're kind of gross looking. I love them. Uh, but there are sub There are a bunch of different kinds of pit bulls. So which one do people even mean? You know what I mean? Like it's all it's such a muddled, convoluted, um, ignorant conversation to have that it's not one that I really want to participate in until I encounter, you know, some bullshit over my dog. Since I own two. And they're my best dog. They're cute, just beautifully tempered dogs. They're easy and they always kind of work. Actually, Butchie was, he was like kind of feral when I got him. He was nuts, actually. But it, like, quick. Two weeks, it was like couch potato, easy dog. Um, not that you should dog on the couch. But um, anyway, yeah, people should stop thinking about them and stop talking about them. That, that's, that's the first thing. The deeper um, question, and like, uh, really what I think about this is, is that uh, it's really not about the dogs. I think that the discussion, the debate over pit bulls, whatever that means, again, this is a very nebulous term, uh, it's a proxy for race and, and class prejudice. Because if you think, if you break it down and you really analyze it, who owns pit bulls for the most part, right? People on the Upper West Side? Not so much. There's a lot of Goldens up there. Uh, what you're seeing is people of color, black people, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, uh, rural, poor, southern people, white people, white work, some white working class people. Um, but you, it's not a super popular breed out, out in the suburbs, that, that's for sure. You know, we got a lot of sporting breeds out there. Not, not you know, you're, you're going to get quite a few looks uh, from people when you go to the suburbs, typically. Um, and I encounter that a little bit when I go back to Massachusetts and you know, visit family. But um, it's, it's not about dogs, I don't think. I think that if people don't realize that they're doing that when they do it, but I think that they're responding to latent or not so latent biases against people in their mind. The owners of these dogs, they're associated with the ghetto, with uh, rednecks, with whatever group that owns them. They're, they're just, they're lower down in the socioeconomic ladder for the most part. And pit bulls are associated with their owners. Think of it as a thuggish dog. Um, so that that's where I think most of it comes from. And uh, I've always thought that. And there was a book recently by this woman, Brown and Dickey. Um, it's called Pitbull. You should read it. Um, and that was basically her thesis. It was like, oh, it's cool if someone finally said that. Because I've been saying that for, for years. Um, should have written the fucking book. But uh, in, here's, here's what happened. There is such a radical contingent of anti-pitbull activists 
out there that she got like death threats for the book. This is like, you know, like some opera class white class, white chick, her dad, I think was like a famous author. And she like went and rest she got a pit bull rescue or something. She didn't know shit about dogs really, but she wrote a really compelling, thoughtful book. And uh, and because it didn't adhere to what these people want, which is to get rid of the breed. And I think she wrote her thesis was quite accurate. I can see how that would strike a nerve with these people too. Um, because no one likes to be called a bigot. Um, and it is bigotry, by the way. You're generalizing. It's bigotry isn't reserved just for human beings. It, it's, it's, it's the tendency of the human mind to generalize, to overgeneralize in a negative way toward X, whatever group, whatever category. That's what bigotry is. So, they're a bunch of fucking bigots, these people, and they're crazy, and they, she was getting <laughs> threats. So, that goes to show, like, how militant and, and just radicalized the anti-pitbull crusaders really are. They're really awful people. Uh, for what, I, I've said this a bunch before, but the animal world, the dog world in particular, it attracts some really gross people. Just, and it's, it's, the, it's because the dogs are a proxy for the person's narcissism and vanity. The dog isn't really there. You know? they, just, they just want everyone to see how compassionate they are to fur baby. And, oh, I, just, I rescued a pit bull. Like, I, I love that. I, I rescued like he was drowning in a river. Now, you went and you bought a dog. You bought a fucking dog for like 300 bucks. You got a discount. Good for you. <laughs> Fuck off. I mean, it's nice and everything, yeah, I get it, but, you know, you don't get the middle of honor for that. Um, anyway, slightly off topic, but yeah, pit bulls, just to set, set the record straight on a few things, you, if you have a dog, right, that has, comes from a pit bull lineage, and this is an umbrella term, but, you know, you've got, what, American Bullies, American Pit Bull Terrier, American Staffies, um, the Bull Terriers fall under the people type umbrella as well. Um, do English Staffordshires? I don't know. Those, little, those things are awesome. I don't get one. Um, they're like 30 pounds. I don't know. Maybe. Who gives a shit? Fucking dog's a dog. Yeah. But when we talk about breeds, we talk about general tendencies, right? Behavioral patterns that we tend to see, but it's by no means a product of genetic determinism. Well, my, in my experience with pit bulls, they tend to have phlegmatic temperaments love people. Um, high, some of them are highly energetic. A lot of them are lazy, especially once they hit a certain age. But you got to be careful with uh, dog aggression. Um, first of all, they're big, strong dogs. They're little balls of muscle. So if there is an accident, it's, 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 you know, it's going to be severe. So a bigger dog is a bigger responsibility. Um, and then with pits, because they do come from, um, they have that lineage they were used for bull baiting. They come from, they have a fighting history. Um, which a lot of dogs do. Whatever. Uh, but they, they can have a little bit more animal aggression. Really, they, they have this tenacity to them. This gameness. Uh, that if they get into a fight, they're not going to give up. It's terriers. Same shit, you know. So, you got to start the socialization process with the dog, dogs early. That's critical. They tend to be great with people. They need basic obedience. A pit bull is not a dog that's going to respond. They're not going to respect you if you just tree train them and use positive reinforcement. They just they won't respect you. Um, but they are incredibly easy to train and unbelievably responsive to obedience training. So if you put the work in with them, they're easy dogs, man. But you just got to be careful with other dogs. Go slow, you know, and don't make any assumptions and. and and be be proactive about it early with them too. That helps a lot. Don't take them to dog parks. Don't do that with any dog. That's stupid. Um, and that that that's basically it. I mean, that's been my experience with them, and I've probably worked with over a hundred of them at this point. Uh, whether they were pit, you know, pitbull type mutts, whatever. Um, you know, it, it, by the way, a lot of them. 
I can't fucking tell. They, again, a lot of the dogs I think I may have worked with that were pits, they might have no pit bull blood, pit bull type blood in them uh, whatsoever. They, but they just looked a lot like them. And this fucking freak out. He's, you're something. You're something. Um, but they're real lovers with people. They, you know, it's, it's unusual for a uh, pit to have aggression directed toward humans. It, it certainly happens, but again, that can go back to the lineage too, because a dog, if they were going to fight in, in ring sports, if they redirected the handler, the dog was no good to them. This is, you know, 18th century. Um, so they were bred to really actually, going way, way back, to actually be very, very uh, good with people. But they're not fucking nanny dogs either. And this is the other problem is that the other side of the debate, the pit bull advocates, are almost as bad as the other, the other side. Are, uh, they're fucking nuts. <laughs> they're crazy. And they spread lies. It's just bullshit. They, you know, like dogs bite dog or, or they, it, they're militant. They're, just, they're like the worst of the rescue Nazis. Like, they're just terrible. I, like, go online and argue with them. I'm, I'm falling in this trap before it's in a bad movie. No, I get just as bad. Um, but they just suck. They just say they just lie, 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 and they, and they don't even realize it happened. But um, anyway, it, dude, they're they're not that bad. They're not that fucking bad. I think they're pretty easy. If you're pushed over as, as an owner, then you you, you you may run into problems. But I deal with these guys all the time, and they're a mess. Because the owner's you know, been doing the positive reinforcement bullshit. They don't give him any structure or boundaries. And then the dog's out of control. But you know what? That that's try it with a cunning corso. That's that's my dream. Or a melon or school but you know, like yeah, you'll have some really cool. By the way, those two breeds I think are gonna be the next ones that are gonna have serious problems. The, the Malinois, because they're gonna be the popularized dog. They're going to replace the sporting dogs, possibly, out in the cell rooms, because they've been out in movies. And the Connie Corso, I think, is going to be the new dog du jour amongst, you know, tough guys, criminals, you know, on the Google South, and, and possibly do some fighting. They just have a bad feeling about it. I think the Mal's and the Corsos might have a bad future, because they're getting more popular. And they're... Forget about pets, man. You, you talk about tricky dogs. <laughs> Woo! Those dogs are hard. You have to have a license, though. Those two dogs. You should. You have to, you know, attend some courses just like you would with a firearm. And that's the type of breed specific legis legislation there should be. It should be like, just like um, registering for a firearm. You get a higher caliber breed, that's fine. You just gotta take a few classes, that's it. You know, and then you get registered and you can own one. And then breeding needs to be regulated. So, um, it's a longer discussion. Don't believe the hype. All the shit about the jaws locking. No, they have strong jaws. They're strong. They can get into a fight and not let go, but you can. Their jaw is open. They don't have a locking device in their jaws. It's just absurd the shit that people believe about them. So, think critically. I mean, I just. This goes up my ass sideways I hate people, whether it comes to politics, whatever. Like, you know, just. Anything people don't think critically and they're just mindless, they follow the herd and they just repeat mindless tropes. Don't do that in life, it's a terrible way to go through life and it's harmful. Because look, I have great dogs, they don't deserve this shit. I don't, I shouldn't have to jump through hoops to get homeowners insurance, to get a fucking apartment. It's not fair to me, all right. I worked very hard on all my dogs and my pit bulls. I probably, I really didn't even have to, probably. Um, you know, so, I mean, I'm an asshole, but there are nice versions of me out there who have them, and they don't deserve to be victimized, and the dogs don't either. So, your ideas matter, because you're spreading ignorance. If, even if you do it in, a, in an innocent kind of way, like, don't do jaws lock. Don't. Don't say shit like that. Like, that's a, don't let people stab people. I thought they did, but it's a shitty thing to say. You know, like, think. Think. <laughs> think. Jeff Willie, he's a deep thinker. Thinking about chicken nuggets. Mwah. Mm.